Welcome back everybody. Um, it is day two of me reading this book series. Um, Y'all didn't say that it was a bad idea, so I'm gonna take that as you guys liked it. Um, we are um, starting second chapter in the series, uh, or in the first book of The Fire Within. Uh, for those of you who have not watched my last video, um, I started reading this book in a three book series that I'm calling the Fire Series. Um, and so far, um, we've met uh, Elizabeth Penny Kettle and her daughter Lucy and um, David Rain, who is... Uh, the tenant who is renting a room in their house. We also know that um, they have a thing for clay dragons and Lucy look, is looking for a injured squirrel named Conker. Um, I think that's pretty much every th the summary of what we know so far. So without further ado, I'm going to begin. I hope you guys enjoy it. Give it a thumbs up if you do. Um, hit that like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to me. I know most people who watch my videos are already sub subs, but more the merrier. Um, all right, let's see. <clears throat> David unpacks. You saw him, cried Lucy, bursting into David's room the moment she arrived home from school that day. As I said, he saw, oh, I did not say that. So he got his belongings brought over and when their neighbor um, started questioning because they he thought that they had a pest a pest problem because a pest control um, vehicle was in their driveway who was just a friend or the father of one of David's friends uh, David said that he saw a rat in their neighbor's yard when really it was a squirrel <clears throat> you saw him cried Lucy bursting into David's room the moment she arrived home from school that day. David tottered slightly and looked over his shoulder. He was balancing on a stool, stacking books on a shelf. All around the room were half, half opened boxes packed with an assortment of dusty bits and pieces magazines, CDs, posters, a radio, a plastic model of a space shuttle, a travel alarm clock, an expensive looking camera, a personal computer, and a tiny mountain of books. Saw who? He said. Conquer! Lucy wriggled. Excuse me. Lucy wriggled her backpack onto the floor and blew a loose strand of hair from her brow. She hurried to the window, raised herself on tiptoes, and peered intently into the garden. Mom told me, she continued, practically breathless, you fibbed to Mr. Bacon. That's the neighbor. You said you saw a rat, but you really saw a conger. David blew a cloud of dust off a book. I saw a squirrel. I couldn't swear it was conger. He was pretty far off, near Mr. Bacon's pond. Conker's a squirrel with one eye, isn't he? Lucy leaned back, hands first, against the wall. Yes, she said. How did you know? I read minds said David. He wiggled his outstretched fingers at her. Lucy wasn't swayed. Mom told you. She sniffed. That's not fair. Conker's my squirrel. Conker's a wild animal, said David. He doesn't belong to anyone, Lucy. He stepped down off the stool and picked up another handful of books. How come you have a name for him anyway? I would have thought it's practically impossible to tell one squirrel from another. Lucy hurried across the room, pushed an old guitar into the middle of the bed, and plopped herself down. It is, unless you look hard. 
I had names for five of them. Should I tell you? Well, okay. First there was Conker. I called him that because of the red tufts of fur around his feet. All the squirrels had those, but his were sort of browner, like a chestnut. Very good, said David. He picked his space shuttle out of a box and looked around for somewhere to land it. Then there was Ringtail. He was easy to see. He had some whirly black fur on his tail. And Cherulia, she was ever so pretty. I named her after a can of rice pudding. Rice pudding? I like it. We have it all the time. Great, muttered David. He wasn't particularly fond of it. He put his shuttle on the fireplace shelf, and for the first time noticed something was missing. Oh, the dragon's gone. Lucy nodded, pulling on a sock. Mom must have taken him back to the den. Why? I liked him. Lucy turned and glanced at the open window. A warm breeze was rippling the curtains, making the wind chimes tinkle softly. It's probably because... I don't know, she said awkwardly. How many names have I done? Conker, Ringtail, and Cherulia, muttered David, wondering why Lucy had looked at the window. So, seeing nothing out of the ordinary, he shrugged and continued unpacking. I forgot Shooter, Lucy prattled on, prying the flaps on a box beside her. He buried his acorns in Mr. Bacon's lawn, and Mr. Bacon didn't like it, because his lawn grew oak trees. What's in here? A ferocious crocodile. Lucy squealed and pulled away, then risked a peek. It's books, she pouted. Good job, said David, tapping her nose, or this might have been bitten right off. He put some ring binders on the bed. What on the, f what was the fifth fifth squirrel's na name? Lucy almost leapt into the air as she said it. Birchwood. He used to chase the others away. He had a big white tummy and his fur was sparkly like the bark of a silver birch tree. I hope he went far away. He was always fighting. David nodded, taking this in. Maybe that's how Conker's eye got hurt. Butchwood fighting? Lucy thought for a moment, then shook her head. He didn't really fight. He just growled and spat, and the others ran away. He was a bully. I didn't like him much. Can I look at your teddy bear, please? She pointed to a bear's snout with just visible behind some rolled up posters. <clears throat> David hauled a golden haired teddy from a box. What's his name? Winston. Be careful, his left ear's loose. Lucy gave the bear a cuddle. Does he sleep in your bed? Only if he promises not to snore. What about Bonnington? Didn't he chase the squirrels? Lucy swung her ponytail. He used to sit on the fence and watch them sometimes, but he never pounced. He wouldn't scratch eyes. Hmm, went David, not entirely convinced. How bad is Conker's injury? Have you seen it? Up close? Lucy sat forward with Winston on her knee. He came to a bird feeder once, and I sneaked up behind him to feed him some peanuts, and that's how I saw it. It was closed, like this. She shut one eye as tightly as she could. I called him and he jumped and got frightened. But instead of running away, he went running around and around in circles on the grass. I kept turning to watch him, but I got dizzy and fell over. When I stood up, he wasn't there. He went around my legs three times, no four. Are you going to help me rescue him? Rescue him? How do you mean? I want to take him where Ringtail and Cheerlea went. The tenant spluttered with laughter. Lucy, you can't go catching wild squirrels. But he's sick, she pressed, flapping Winston's paws for added effect. He's getting thinner. You can see his bones. And what if the thing that hurt him comes back? What if it gets his other eye? You said you like squirrels. Oh, please help me save him. David shook his head and turned back to his boxes. It's not right to interfere with nature, Lucy. Besides, you don't have 
Any idea where Ringtail and the others have gone? Somewhere nice, she muttered, more in hope than expectation. She lowered her head and swung a leg in defeat. Look, said David, bopping her knee with a rolled up poster. If I thought that Conker was really in danger, I mean really in danger, I'd do everything I could to help him, okay? But I think you're fret fretting too much. Chances are he's coping just fine. Come on, cheer up. Do you want to do me a favor? What? said Lucy, sounding rather deflated. Who are you reading to? My fans. <laughs> Run and ask your mom if I can borrow a duster. Lucy shook her head. She shouldn't be disturbed. She's upstairs making you a dragon. Not anymore, said a voice. Liz came bumping through the door carrying a tray of tea and cookies. She was wearing jeans and an artist's smock. There were smudges of clay all over the material, but mostly the smock was was splattered with paint. Bright green paint, the color of dragons. <clears throat> I hope you're not pestering him again, said Liz, kneeling and setting the tray on the floor. My fault, said David, getting in first. I was asking if she knew how Conker's eye got hurt. Liz hummed as if her point was proven anyway. She handed Lucy a glass of milk. David switched the subject away from squirrels. I hear you've been making me a dragon. Just a little housewarming gift, said Liz. A special one, Liz put in. I've got two, Gowan and Gwendolyn. David, mystified as always when the talk turned to dragons, heaped a spoonful of sugar into his tea and said, What do you mean, special? Lucy looked up. They're little reflections of their owners, said Liz. Help yourself to a cookie, David. She pushed the plate so close to his face that he could almost eat a cookie without having to pick one up. He smiled and took a graham cracker. Liz sank sank down looking looking miffed she grabbed a cookie and chomped it hard when i make someone a special dragon liz continued i try to bring out some quality or interest of the person concerned if you were fond of baseball for instance i might make one holding a bat he likes books said Lu lucy picking up a large spiral bound volume and a bleak gray mountain range on the cover she turned a few pages and put it down, bored. That's a textbook, for college, David said. I do read other things, stories and stuff. <clears throat> Lucy sat up smartly. Would you read one to me? Lucy, snapped her mother. That's very cheeky. I have a story every night, Lucy went on. Mom tells me about the dragons. David glanced at the ceiling as if it were a window to the den above. I'm impressed. A storyteller and a potter? They're hardly bestsellers, Liz said modestly. She raised a hand before Lucy could speak. Go upstairs, please, and change out of those clothes. And while you're up there, check on David's dragon. Lucy sighed and wiggled, wiggled off the bed. Her feet had barely touched the floor when there came a dreadful shrieking sound from the garden. Everyone turned to open the, to the open window in time to see Bonnington come scrambling in. The big tabby cat had his ears laid back and his fur sticking out like the branches of a tree. He dropped to the floor, flattened his back, and quickly wriggled under the bed. What is the matter with him? said Liz. David walked to the window and opened it wide. Loud bird chatter filled the room. Go and see, hissed Lucy, tugging David's sleeve. Conker might be in danger. David raised an eyebrow, but went to look anyway. <clears throat> in the garden, all seemed peaceful enough. David walked to one side of the long, narrow lawn, stopping here and there to sweep back leaves on the larger plants. He couldn't find anything out of place other than a broken pot, plant pot. 
His heart did leap when he poked around in some overgrown grass and heard a momentary squishing sound. But that turned out to be a soggy old sponge. He checked the rock garden, the shed, the trash area, and an old pane of glass covered with algae. He even scrambled up the paneled fence to have a look over into Mr. Bacon's garden. There was no sign of a squirrel and nothing to suggest any inkling of danger. But on the way back to the house, he did make two important discoveries. Near the patio steps, he crouched down and picked up a blue black feather. It was long and sleek and felt cool against his skin. It belonged to a jay, or a crow perhaps? Was it possible that Bonington had clashed with a bird? David's gaze paneled, paned the autumn skyline taking in the spreading sycamore tree that stood in the gap between the Penny Kettle's house and Mr. Bacon's, away to the right. He couldn't see a black-colored bird anywhere, but as his eyes drift back towards the house, he did see something that made him start. A light had just flickered in the dragon's den. A few seconds passed, then it flickered again, flooding the window with a pale orange color. David cut the hand over his eyes. It seemed too precise to be sunlight on glass, too irregular to be a candle glow, and a light bulb? he decided was the wrong color, which left just one explanation. Fire, he breathed and let the feather go. It had barely touched the ground by the time he burst breathless into his room. <clears throat> what on earth? said Liz as the door crushed open. She put her hand on the teapot to steady it. Fire, cried David. Upstairs, quickly, dial 911. I'll get water from the bathroom. Fire? said Lucy, looking quizzic quizzically at her mom. I saw it from the garden. Come on, Liz, hurry. David, wait, she cried, grabbing his arm. Slow down. I think you're mistaken. Lucy, by now, was moving to the door. I'll go and have a look. What? screeched David. She can't go. But Lucy was already climbing the stairs. David, calm down. Liz said, restraining him. That's my studio. There's nothing that could cause a problem. Seconds later, Lucy called down from the landing. It's all right, Mom. It's only, you know. What? said David, looking baffled. I saw a jet of fire. Fire. I'm sure I did. Liz smoothed the creases she made in his sweatshirt. Probably a dragon sneezing, she said. Come on, let's go and see how yours is, shall we? To David's astonishment, there was really no hint of a fire in the den. It was probably this, said Liz. She po pointed to a round stained glass ornament dangling off a piece of string in the window. She tilted it to catch the afternoon sun. Jeweled reflections bounced around the room. Trick of the light, she said. Suddenly from behind them, Lucy piped up, Mom, Gruffin's in the wrong place again. David turned. Lucy was staring at a shelf full of dragons. A look of disapproval was etched on her face. Who's Gruffin? he asked. Liz had took him by the arm and twisted him around. He's a new dragon that sits by the door, usually. The resident dragons, the ones we don't sell, all have their own places. Sometimes they get moved when a new batch goes out. Gruffin always seemed to be, seems to be flitting around. Leave him, Lucy, and come over. Lucy trudged over. Do you like them, she asked. In a slightly odd voice, the tenant confessed that he'd never seen anything quite like it before. All around the studio, arranged on tiers of wooden shelves, were dozens and dozens of handcrafted dragons. There were big dragons, little dragons, dragons curled up in peaceful slumber, baby dragons breaking out of their eggs, dragons in spectacles, dragons in pajamas, dragons doing ballet, dragons everywhere. Only the window wall didn't have a rack. Over there instead stood a large old bench. A lamp was angled over it, 
There are brushes and tools and jelly jars prepared, plus lumps of clay beside a potter's wheel. The sweet smell of paint and methyl hung in the air like like a hung in the air. Now he came to think of it. David realized he'd been smelling the scent from the very first moment he'd entered the house. Amazing, he said, gliding over to the bench. This is a good one here. He pointed to an eerie but elegant creature on a stand just behind the potter's wheel. It had a wraparound tail and ears like a cat. Two large and exquisitely beautiful wings were raising from its back like sails on a ship. Its oval-shaped eyes were intriguingly closed, its snout front, stout front feet pressed firmly together. That's Guinevere, said Lucy in a whisper. She's sort of a queen. She's mom's special dragon. Is she sleeping? Lucy gave a shake of her head. Praying? Not really. What is she doing then? Across the room, Liz coughed. Lucy, why don't you show David his dragon? Lucy pointed to the one on the potter's wheel. David lifted it into his hands. The dragon, his dragon, had all the usual, usual penny kettle touches. Spiky wings, big flat feet, tilted green scales with turquoise flashes. The characteristic oval-shaped eyes had a gentle, cheery, helpful look. But there was a deep sensitivity in them, too, as if the creature could weep at the drop of a scale. David rested it in his palm. The dragon sat up on its thick, curved tail. Unlike Guinevere, it wasn't praying or resting or whatever the queen dragon was supposed to be doing. Instead, it had a pencil wrapped in its claws and it was biting the end of it, lost in thought. I hope you like him said Liz. He was interesting to do. He's wonderful, said David. Why does he have a pencil? And a pad? And a pad, said Lucy, pointing to a notepad in the dragon's other paw. It's what he wanted, said Liz, coming to join them. I tried him with a book, but he just didn't like it. He definitely wanted a pencil to chew on. Perhaps he's a drawing dragon, said Lucy. Do you like drawing pictures? David shook his head. Can't draw for anything. What do you mean he wanted a pencil? Liz lifted a, sh lifted a shoulder. Special dragons are like characters in a book. I have to go where they want to take me. I have a writer friend who's always saying that. Lucy let out an excited gasp. You mean he's a dragon for making up stories? Lucy, don't start, said Liz. Now, David, if you accept this dragon, you must promise to care for him always. You mustn't make him cry, said Lucy. David ran a thumb along the dragon's snout. Um, this might sound like a silly question, but how is it possible to make him cry? By not loving him, said Lucy, as if it ought to be obvious. <clears throat> Imagine there's a spark inside him, said Liz. If you love him, it will always stay lit, smiled Lucy. To light it, you must give him a name, said Liz. Something magical, said Liz. Think of one now. David had to think. How about... Hmm, Gadzooks? Lucy turned on her heels. They like it, she said, looking around the shelves. They do? said David, raising an eyebrow. As far as he could tell, there was no dragons doing backflips or flapping wings for joy. Lucy nodded as fast as her head looked as it... Lucy nodded so fast her head looked as if it were in danger of coming right off. Didn't you hear them go... Gadzooks is a lovely name, said Liz, giving Lucy a nudge with her shoulder. It suits him very well. Now to the tour over. It's time we went downstairs, I think. Good idea, said David, wiping a trickle of sweat from his brow. 
Is it me, or is it getting warm in here? Your oven's not on, is it? It's not dinner time yet, said Lucy. Not the oven in the kitchen, David laughed. I mean your potter's oven. You know your clean. When you make things from clay, you put them in a kiln to fire, don't you? Before anyone could speak, the telephone rang. Liz moved towards the door. Better answer that. With a curt look at Lucy, she left the room. No sooner was her mother out of sight than Lucy turned to David and said, Are you going to make up a story for me? No, he said, trying to clean a blemish off Gadzooks. It looked for all the world like scor like a scorch mark on his tail, but it was deep in the glaze. I'm hopeless at stories, Lucy. I want to have a clue what to tell one about. Conquer, she suggested, almost bouncing off the floorboards. Do a story about Conquer. Gadzooks will help you. That's what special dragons are for. David pried his collar away from his neck. It really was getting warm in the den. No, he said, but I, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll... I've got to go into town on Friday. While I'm there, I'll go to the library and see if I can find a book about squirrels. A story book? No, a factual one. I'm curious to know how Conker's Eye got hurt. A reference book about squirrel behavior might give us a clue. All right, said Lucy. When you know some more, you can do a story then. Lucy, Liz called before David could respond. Coming, she said, and ran off. At the door, she paused and looked back at the tenant. Did you really not hear them hurrying? David looked left and right at the dragons. Dozens of oval-shaped eyes peered back. Lucy pointed to her heart. You have to hear it here before you hear it here. Her finger moved from her heart to her ear. She grinned and skipped away. Yeah, right, David muttered, and brought Gadzooks up close to his face. Hello, dragon. Pilot light lit? Good, now listen up. Let's get this relationship straight from the start. No sneezing in the middle of the night, no setting fire to my books or computer, and no frightening my teddy bear, okay? Oh, and no crying. First sign of trouble and you turn into a shapeless lump of again. Got it? Gadzooks chewed the end of his pencil in silence. David looked around the room a final time. Her, he went to the shelves of dragon. Then, clutching Gadzooks, he headed for his room, still wondering about that kiln. And that is the end of this chapter. Uh, let me know what you think. I know that it's kind of a little kid-ish series, but, um, it does get more interesting, I guess, as the series goes on. I'm on the last book with Gideon, um, we're almost done with it, um, we have a few more chapters left to read, um, let me know what you think, and if you want me to continue, um, we we have a day nurse tomorrow or a night nurse tomorrow night. I'm going to try and do a live stream. Um, it depends on how much sleep I'm able to get during the day. Um, I do have some errands to run first thing in the morning, and we have an appointment in the afternoon. But um, um. If I don't stream tomorrow, I'll probably stream on on Friday um, when our other night nurse gets here. Um, if you guys want me to continue with the story, I will continue to do that. Um, and as well as the live streams. Um, 
let me know in the comments what live, what game you want me to live stream, or if you want it to be something completely different that has nothing to do with video games. Um, otherwise, I ha hope you have a great night. Love y'all. Uh, you're amazing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.